Hello and welcome to Funky Fox Gaming. I am back on This Is The Police and in the last episode, yeah, a little bit of a mixed bag. I lost a couple of officers, one to lots and lots of bee stings, one to drunk driving and I'm blaming that bar that opened up right around the corner. Other than that, didn't go too badly. Uh, solved a few crimes. Uh, I think I've got a couple hours standing though, so let's have a go at the Goddamn bar. So that was the drunk driver. Oh, dear. Snitch. Whatever will I do? I'm not hiring him. Too old. John's Cathedral, child molestation. 11 year old Michael Song, a boy from the choir. Really? Michael S Song? A boy from the choir. Song. Says he was molested by a priest, Aaron Huber. Oh, I probably should have sent two to that. Mr. Boyd, I'm a man of broad views, and I came to terms with the existence of sodomites a long time ago. Especially when they keep a low profile. But now these perverts have started shoving their rotting little syphilic, syphilitic no noses in our affairs. Never heard of that one though. Syphilitic. Drugs are freely being sold in the unicorns of Arcadia Gay Club. Right there in the public toilets. I beg you, send your men undercover and clean this filth out of the city. As the Lord once cleansed Sodom and Gomorrah. You're selling drugs. No. Oh. Every time. Hmm. I was expecting the need for backup for that. Pleasantly surprised. Oh, there's a lot of things. Uh, I'll not bother with that one. Ah. Oh. oh wait, no. That's the one I ignored. All the windows in the house are lit up and there's loud music playing. Knock on the door, knock down the door, open up, it's the police. Knock down the door. Oh, shit, oh, that was the wrong one. That was a misclick. There's a guy with a bottle of beer sitting on the sofa. There's a gun on the nearby table, along with a handful of multicolored pills. Aim at the man. You got anything for a headache, put down the beer, you're under arrest. Aim at the man. Two men with shotguns jump in from the next room and open fire. Shoot to kill, retreat and surround the house, flip the table and hide behind it, retreat and surround the house. We've got a situation here. The door to the apartment is broken, but the police still knock loudly and announce themselves. A brief noise comes from inside and then it's all quiet. 
cop centre. Sitting in a corner is a sobbing battered woman with no one else around. The apartment has no electricity. Search the apartment with a flashlight. Stop whimpering and tell us what happened. Calm the woman down. The shocked girl continues to cry but points a trembling hand towards the bed in the far corner. Check under the bed, flip the bed over quickly. Don't be silly, there's no such thing as monsters, nobody's under the bed. That's not the just yet. Uh, I can't do that one because I haven't got anybody to send. Oh, hang on. Jack, we have something going down today at Wise Dragon Restaurant at quarter past midnight. We wouldn't want any policemen crashing the party. I think two and a half grand should be enough. Yeah, okay. I hope this isn't going to get too graphic. One problem gone. Yeah, for charity, I suppose. From Ron Atticus. Jack, one of my partners, with whom I have several very large contracts, at the request of his wife, wishes to open a confectionery factory in Freeberg. The problem is that the local stores stock products from the Clementine Burroughs factory, and there's no room for competition on the market. Not that I care about selling fucking candy, but I must demonstrate that I am a reliable business ally. Today, a couple of my best men will burn this clementine factory to the ground and nobody's going to get in their way, right? Excellent! Aha! Oh well, you're getting hired. Uh, for where? 
Oh, A. Oh, Duke, I know these two seem kind of old. Officer on scene. Looks like we have a situation here. The suspect is at the photo studio, standing with his back to the door. He's telling the employee to hurry. You there, let's go. Out on the street. You sick bastard, those are children. Arrest the man. Why would you not just arrest him? Mr. Boyd, I cannot tell you how dear my factory is to me. It took decades to realise my late husband's dream to fill the city with candy, which any poor man can afford. But I'm sure you don't have time for this. I hear you're a businessman, so I come to you with a business proposal. Save my factory, and you'll take a share of our daily profits. Ooh. Uh, see, I'm kind of tempted to side. I'm also immediately going to take my money out of uh, Atticus Corp. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. My factory is saved. I knew you were a good man. There's not many people like you left in the city. Ron Atticus, we're done. Jack, I don't know what got into your head, but you'll regret it. Our partnership is an end. Your day will come, and when you'll see what a terrible mistake you've made. I'm glad I took my money out. <laughs> Amelia Montez Medrano is standing in the conference hall, armed with a gun. He's back to the door. He pushed, he's pushed two men in a, into a corner and is holding them at gunpoint. Two others are on the floor, one isn't moving, the second is groaning, holding his stomach. Mr. Medrano, we have your wife on the line. She's begging you not to do anything stupid. Quietly sneak into the conference room and take down the suspect. Taser the bastard. Works every time. That was fortunate timing. Although now I can't answer that one. A group of ten students went into the woods to camp for the night. He set up tents, made a fire, drank some alcohol, and sang some songs. Around midnight, they were suddenly attacked by a large man with a bag on his head, wielding a hatchet. One girl managed to reach the road, where she flagged down a passing car and called the police right away. The fate of the other students is unknown. I think that's going to be a false alarm. Okay. Ha. See, it mentioned the girls, so I thought the girls were going to be involved in that. <laughs> oh 
no, it was an actual real one. Crap. Ah, oh, what? That's like the entirety of my offices. So I've got enough for this one, technically now. So, Juan Camilo Salas is an experienced smuggler, very capable of obtaining and smuggling any sorts of goods across any border. He will. He always comes armed and believes that's all the protection he needs. The station chief is a morphine junkie, and Juan Camilo Salas is more than happy to fill his need. In exchange for a blind eye, he returns Salas' other business. The pieces of stolen car are hidden inside the truck cargo container. Containers are loaded onto trains, cars directly from the truck. Juan Camilo Salas watches while the weight is recorded and the container is sealed. For every service, Salas always pays cash. I feel like I've got everything. Nothing seems like it's out of place. So that's the junky stuff. Maybe it's that. Wow, what did I do? From Sea Hall. Last year we actively fought against unregistered businesses, activities and grey companies who shamelessly use loopholes in the law. We've tightened some rules, making it more difficult for fraudsters to rent business premises and import goods into the city. Of course, they immediately became outraged and threatened to form a protest under the windows of City Hall. We must teach these parasites to respect the law. Permission for the use of force is granted if required. acting illegally in the interest of his friends from the major corporations which are literally destroying our community of small businesses. Many of his initiatives are contrary to federal law and if the police end up using force then you'll end up to take you'll be the ones to take the rap. You better cover your ass in case it gets ugly. Ah, uh, gonna cost us eight grand.
Seeing the police, the man walks up close and salutes. The outfit is obviously from a costume shop, but the gun looks real enough. Officer, you are urgently needed at the police station. I'm afraid it can't wait. Yeah. Mr. Boyd, I have long turned a blind eye to the activities of the women's clinic, which in essence is an abortion clinic for sluts. God, I already hate this guy. Happily, the management humbly recognised their sin and delivered to our church plenty of the nutrients necessary for the preparation of our divine power. But recently, the hospital replaced its chief doctor and refuses to continue honouring the arrangements established by his pious predecessors. Fortunately, he was able to quickly find an alternative supplier. So I was able to. And our production was not affected. However, the upstart doctor needs to be taught a lesson in Christian humility. I'm sure you have people you know. Sorry, I'm sure you have people who know how to cut out a man's pride with a scalpel. And hold the anesthesia. No. It's the first one where they've run off. Behind the bar is a young guy with a piece of glass in his hand. The frightened bartender is in tears. Hit the man with a light stick. Did I say light stick? Hit the man with a night stick, even. Hey, buddy, let's get out of here. We've got a bottle of whiskey in the car. Order a drink. Oh. Okay, I've got enough now. So the victim. My mother and I were about to leave when Father Huber came up. He took me into his office and told me to read the sermon on the mount out loud. He bowed his head, sat down and put his arm around me, my shoulders. And then he did my top button on my shirt. I didn't like it, but I didn't say anything. A little later he pulled out his camera and began to take pictures while I read. Then he put the camera away and began unbuckling the belt in his pants. That's when I ran away. So, that would be that one, that one. That one, that one. Ah, hang on. Hey. I don't even need to read the rest of them.
Damn. Why is he not at the church? He's a priest. Nearly every day that he tries to pull out. Oh. Crap. It's alright, at least I don't have to lose an officer. I just lose an available one. Don't care. Ooh. I'm glad I helped them. We've got a situation here. That is a weird looking clown. The children are crying crying but quietly sitting on the bus. Outside the bus there's a man in a clown suit giggling. Hey man, the joke's over, let the kids go. Kids, it was only a toy grenade, you can come out now, don't be scared. Shoot the clown with the taser. Always go with the taser. Almost empty. A woman wearing sunglasses picks up an orange. Pull back and watch. Ma'am, please put the orange down and remove your glasses. Take a car and put some vegetable in it and slowly approach. <laughs> I'm going to go for that one. Ah. The woman throws an orange at the cops, overturns the boxes, and runs for the back door. Run after her, hide a banana in your pocket, throw an orange back at her. That was a really weird one. Looks like we have a situation oh. here. The place has turned into a real battle. More workers joined in to help their friends from the factory, and the fight expanded to involve several dozen people. Fire shots into the air and order them to go down on the ground, give a heart rending scream and order them to cease fighting immediately. Find someone still on their feet and knock them on the ass. The fight grinds to the halt and two athletes approach the police. The fuck you think you're doing here? We got this, we don't need you. The men look quite menacing, armed with bricks and ironwork. Use a nightstick. Tears of the asshole. No, no, not Morris. What happened? The taser's supposed to work every time. Damn it. That's doing so well. This is not the second time. Wow, six grand. I'm really glad I helped them. Uh, you know what? You know what? Where is she? 
you are going to get the sack. Grand. No, sorry. Not enough. Officer on scene. Looks like we have a situation here. The entrance is blocked by a tough looking bikers and sizable crowd has gathered around. Arrest the bikers. Guys, did you make those holes in your jackets or did you just buy them like that? Whack one of the bikers with a knife. Arrest them. Someone from the crowd begins to scream hysterically and attacks the bikers with a knife. Why? Why would you? Try to stop them. Try to stop the man with the knife. Duck for cover and open fire on the crowd. Fire into the air and order everyone to disperse. Ah. Well, at least those two went alright. Can I hire anybody new yet? No. Three security guards with guns are set up at the garage and are preparing for the assault. Inside are four armed robbers who have taken an elderly woman hostage. Leave it to security guards and don't interfere. Tell the security guards to move in. Pull the guards back and open negotiations with the robbers. The robbers want their freedom in exchange for the hostage. You're surrounded, release a hostage and come out with your hands up. Tell them they can go for their car and when they're out in the open move in. Push two more women into the garage so that so the un what? Push two more women into the garage so the one who is already there won't get bored. <laughs> Yeah, well, offer me more than a grand. We've got a situation here. When the police showed up, many of the fans fled. A few dozen people remain in the stands fighting each other to the death. Plunge into the ground with tasers at the ready. Take the fried pig's head home with you. Surround the brawling crowd and break out the night sticks. I don't think Taser would work there with that many people. Ah, I'm just not going to have enough time to do one of these, am I? That's really annoying. Ah. Okay, folks. I think I will leave it there for today. So, I annoyed the corporation, but I am now getting daily thousands from the sweet factory, which, you know, I'd quite happily get that, and I'd buy chocolates for me in exchange. Uh, <laughs> nothing much happening with the church, even though I'm just saying no to them every single time. I imagine something eventful will happen with them at some point soon but other than that not too bad of a session for now thanks for watching see you next time bye bye